Oh, hey guys, sorry, I'm just practicing for my multi-phase motion video, which uh, is this video. Hey guys, welcome to the multi-phase motion video in which we are going to learn about multi-phase motion. Multi-phase motion is in general motion where you have one acceleration during one part and a different acceleration during another part. Maybe there's only two phases, maybe there's three phases. Really, there could be any number of phases, but the hallmark of it is that you have acceleration that changes during the course of the question. The other really important thing is that the, the velocity at the end of one phase, so the <clears throat> final velocity for that part, becomes the initial velocity for the next phase of motion. All right, the stereotypical example that I will use for multi-phase motion is the jumping guy, all right? So if you're jumping, right, pushing off the ground um, during this part where you are, you know, lowest, right, and this part where you're still touching the ground all the way up until this moment where your feet have just barely left the ground, this right here has one value or at least a function for your acceleration. All right, so this right here, this acceleration would be the, let's call it the jump acceleration. I have no idea what it is, okay? You know, it, it could be 15 or something like that, but whatever it is, it's upwards and whatever. It's some number that is enough to make you do this. After the jump, the, the push off, right? Now, for this part of it, all the way up from when you leave the ground to when you touch down again, for that part of your motion, the acceleration is gravity, which is to say negative 9.8 meters per second squared. All right, and then, of course, during this motion, you would have the third and final phase, which is the landing. During the landing, you would have, again, like some other different acceleration. All right now, I could make up numbers that would go with this question, uh, if, uh, but I, I'm not interested in working this one out in particular. We are going to look at one from your notes packet. Um, however, the other key thing here is not just that, oh, look, the acceleration changes, it's this. At this moment, you would say that your initial velocity is, of course, zero. You're standing there on the ground, ready to jump. Right. Okay. All right. When your feet leave the ground, you have some velocity, which we would call the final velocity, for the part of your motion, which is the jump, the launch, where you're pushing off. Let me make up a number here. Let's say that you're final velocity at the moment that your feet leave the ground is how about 3.5 meters per second, right? And then for this part, this final, quote, final velocity at the end of the jump becomes the initial velocity for the part of your motion, which we would consider the flying through the air part where gravity is in charge. All right, now for the purposes of gravity, of course, you will go flying upwards at the very top of your motion. I've labeled this as A max, or H max, excuse me. At the very top, your velocity would be zero for an instant, then you would fall back down, okay? At the moment that you hit the ground, your final velocity will be some number. Uh, assuming everything works the way that it should in physics, you would in fact land going at uh, negative 3.5 meters per second because you're going downwards, okay? Uh, and you landed at the same height that you launched from. Unless it's a question about jumping off of like a diving board or something like that, and then you do have a different final velocity. Okay, fine. This final velocity during the landing or sorry, at the end of the flying through the air part becomes the initial velocity during the landing. And then 
Finally, at the very end of the question, your final velocity is zero. Okay, so the hallmarks then would be you've got an acceleration which changes during the question, right? During one part, it's one thing. During the next part, it's a different thing. And the final velocity from one part becomes the initial velocity during the next part. All right, let's look at an actual example. Find example 15 in your notes packet. It's about a, uh, a guy jumping off the roof of his house. What? Oh, in, in, into freshly packed snow, or fresh snow, not packed. Good. Ah, there it is. So we have a fellow on the top of his roof. He is jumping downwards, and he's like, whatever, I've got like 10 feet of snow here. Um, because it's like the uh, 2014 winter in Boston, which was outrageous. Um, okay, so the first part of the question says that the guy jumps off the peak of his roof and jumps upwards with an initial velocity of 2 meters per second. We're doing this as though it were a one-dimensional kinematics question. Meaning I am not considering such things as how far out does he jump. That would be the realm of two-dimensional kinematics and is beyond what I hope to cover in this video. Okay, so he's, he's launched himself upwards at two meters per second. All right. During this whole part of the question, his acceleration will, of course, be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. All right. The first part of this question tells you uh, that it's 8 meters from the top of his roof to the beginning of the snow. So this right here is 8 meters. That would be the displacement. Or would it? That's actually a falsehood. I want you to think about that before I go ahead and change it. it it's not 8 meters. It's negative 8 meters. Oh, man, I hope you didn't fall for that one. Why is it negative 8 meters, by the way? If you're answering this question out loud, the people in the same room here are going to think you're weird. But here it goes. It's negative 8 because, of course, the guy goes down, right? If you had it as positive 8 meters, some really weird things happen to the math, and you get some bad, bogus answers. Okay, so negative 8 meters. Okay, and then poof, he hits the snow. Starting from this moment to that moment, he will have a different acceleration, and that's what we're going to start working out in part B. For the moment, what you should do is pause the video and answer part A. Part A wants to know, what is his final velocity? All right, I will uh, tell you, you should probably pause me and work it out see what you get, um, and then resume once you've got an answer. All right, and here's our answer, or at least almost. Um, I, I want to make a couple comments here uh, before I'm just like, great, and then move on to the next part, um, particularly with regard to what might have happened if you had made a mistake here. Because early on, there are usually some blunders that people make in one-dimensional kinematics, and most of them are related to signs. All right, so if you did not realize that you had to call the displacement negative 8 because he goes downwards, then you would have not had that negative sign there. And then this would have said minus. And then you would have had negative 152.8 instead of 160.8. One of two things is going to happen to you at this point. One category of people will take the square root. The calculator will say, error. And they will say, huh, weird. And then quit. Or maybe go track down the problem and figure out, why did I get a negative number? That's really weird. That response is the best one to try and figure out where you went wrong. All right. Second possibility, or third possibility, however I'm numbering this, some people will look at that and they're like, well, I can't take the square root of a negative, so, <clears throat> what negative sign? I don't know what you're talking about. 
and then they take the square root of 152.8. The result is that they get a very similar answer, right? It's about 12, but it's a little bit smaller. They instead get uh, um, 12.36, which is distinctly less than the correct answer. That's the actual worst category, I would say, right? The people who are like, the negative sign probably can just be dropped and they don't bother to figure out maybe where they went. Okay, so um, having the negative sign up here then does actually make a big difference. It is not inconsequential, right? Pay attention to those little details, right? It does matter whether he jumped eight meters up, wow, or eight meters downwards. Okay, fine. That answer right there is uh, almost great, and it's the one your calculator will tell you, but when the guy hits the snow, is he going up or down? If you said up, you're really confused. No, of course he's going down. He's going down, so therefore this should be negative. Please bear in mind that the way your calculator functions, when you take a square root, it will never give you a negative solution. However, in math class, you should have discussed that x squared equals 4 technically has two answers, plus or minus 2, because 2 squared is 4, but so is negative 2 squared, right? However, the calculator will never tell you the negative answer. It will only give you the positive result. And so that means sometimes, particularly if you're using the time-independent equation here, you will have to supply your own negative sign. All right, next bit. Um, for the second phase of this fellow's motion, you're supposed to figure out what his acceleration is, given that he ends up plowing three meters down into the snow. Okay, now, once again, his displacement's negative, right? He goes three meters down into the snow, right? Also, his initial velocity at the moment that he starts to hit the snow is negative 12.68. Wait, hold on, Mr. Erica, where'd you get that number? Well, it's right over there, guys. That's, that's the number right there. But hold on, hold on. What, now you're calling it V naught. It, it, that's the final velocity. How is it now the initial velocity? That is the entire premise of two-phase motion, right? At the moment that he begins to crush his way through the snow, this guy is moving at this number that we saw for, 12.68 meters per second down. It is at that moment that we no longer just have gravity acting on the guy. It's now a new acceleration due to the snow pushing upwards on him. Okay, and we're going to pretend that that's a constant acceleration. It probably wouldn't actually be, but we will we'll, we'll make pretend here, all right? Okay, so the final velocity from this bit where it was gravity um, it is now going to be the initial velocity for the second phase of motion where the snow is bringing him to rest. Okay, and then of course uh, I, I said he's being brought to rest. That means the final velocity is zero. All right, and so now it's going to be pretty much the same thing. Go ahead and solve for his acceleration. If you got positive 26.8, then you did it correctly. It should be positive because the snow is pushing up on him, right? He's moving down but accelerating upwards, therefore coming to rest. The last part of this question asks you to solve for the time that it takes him to stop. Again, pause, resume once you know what you're doing. 